yeah, sure. So great, great to be here today, Carlos. Um, to introduce myself pro professionally, uh, in terms of what I do, I, I'm based in the UK. Um, I've got a, a kind of diverse background, I guess, in business trends as an accountant. Um, I then went into the recruitment business, recruitment industry. Since then, I've had a portfolio career, which has seen me be uh, non-exec director, career advisor, non-executive coach, uh, author, of course, which is what we're talking about today. Um, in terms of martial arts, my martial arts journey began uh, at around the age of 16. In fact, it was at the age of 16. Started in Kung Fu, um, moved then into Muay Thai, did about 25 years in Muay Thai. Uh, stopped Muay Thai about two or three years ago. Um, of course, as you know from reading the book, uh, went to Japan, studied Aikido. I'd achieved a black belt in Aikido before I went, but then went to Japan to do the Senjusei course. Uh, and around the fringes of that, I've trained in mixed martial arts, uh, Krav Maga, uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, which is what I do now. Um, so a whole host of different martial arts. And martial arts, I would say, is at my core and kind of the thing that really makes me tick. Okay, cool. They, I mean, I knew some of these things. <laughs> uh, yes. What's what's your situation now with the like personal uh, with the pandemic and and in a specific with your martial arts practice? How how does the yeah. the pandemic has affected yourself? Yeah, it's a, it's, a good, it's a good question. I mean, I'm talking to you from my uh, office at home. So as I'm sure you've done, spent a lot of time in the house um, in, 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 in the UK where I'm based. We, we've gone from this being locked down to not locked down to potentially being locked down again. And what it's meant for my martial arts practice, I only train in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu now. And of course, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is a very close quarter uh, combat sport. Um, so what it means, we, we, we can't interact properly. So we're doing, um, we've been doing solo drills. Um, my two young lads, my two boys are training Brazilian Jiu Jitsu now, so they can train together. They're eight and seven. Uh, what I have been able to do, which has been quite interesting, um, at the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu school I go to, we were allowed to bring somebody from your household. So the only other person in my household is my wife. So I've taken my wife and uh, to, to quote her, she's been my, my dummy. Uh, on the mats and um, yeah I don't think she's a big fan she doesn't like that close quarter sweating and whatnot that you have to get used to in Brazilian jiu-jitsu so before the pandemic really kicked in I was doing well with Brazilian jiu-jitsu I got my blue belt here my third blue belt I've got a blue belt from three different continents which might be a world first I'm not sure um, but since then the, the level of training the consistency of training obviously as with many people, has taken um, has taken a dive in the intensity of the tra training. You know, it's very different to training in a class and doing a bit of rolling with your wife at the end to, to training in a very competitive class and rolling with some top level people uh, and really pushing yourself. So I, I've, I've, I've definitely felt an adverse effect physically um, and also mentally because the mental game and mental health um, is an important part of what martial arts training is all about. So uh, some people, I think some people think that I, I always had an intention to write a book and that is absolutely not the case. This is my fourth book, but it's the first book that I've ever written about my own personal journey where I've kind of put everything in it, uh, all my thoughts, feelings, vulnerabilities and all that kind of stuff. So I, I enjoy the aspect of writing, but I never intended to write a book. And I certainly didn't go to Japan with the intention to do the course and write a book afterwards. If I had, why would I leave it 13 years? Um, so the, the idea really to write the book was to find something to do in lockdown that would give me a focus. And I think the other element to it is during lockdown, there seemed to be... Um, a resurgence of, of online communication in, in the Aikido world. There were lots of people talking about Aikido. Uh, you were doing some stuff. Um, there was some other stuff on Facebook, some Facebook groups. And people started to talk about Aikido. And I thought, well, this is maybe an opportunity to kill two or three birds with one stone. You know, I can write a book, which is a record for me as to what I did. I can write a book, which is a record for my, for my boys. Um, the other thing that I was keen to do, which does come out towards the end of the book, 
my dad hadn't been very well and I wanted to write my story so that he could read it. He was, he was 82. Uh, I wanted him to read the book. Sadly, he, we lost him earlier in the year, so he never got to read it, but that was a big impetus to push on and get it finished. I had, um, I had a diary, which I kept in Japan. We had to keep a diary as part of the Senshi Sei course. Um, I, I technically kept three diaries. There was the diary we had to hand in. There was the Shinkoku diary, which was the dojo diary, which I would have to do every now and again. And then I kept a private diary with all my thoughts and feelings. Really, it's just a record for me looking back later on in life to remember what my time in Japan was all about. Um, and I took that latter diary, referenced some of the stuff that was in the official diary that I kept, spoke to a few people, pieced it all together, and over a period of probably three or four months, I put the first draft together and uh, it's gone through a few iterations, lots of editing, professional proofreading, now doing the audio book, but uh, almost at the end now where all the, all the different types of, of formats that you can access it in will be available. I would say there's probably, there's two things, two primary differences, uh, or maybe three primary differences. Obviously it was a different year. And every Senshise year, every, every riot police course, every Senshise course is different. And it's different because of different teachers and it's different because of the different participants. So every year is different. Angry White Pajamas was a really important book to me because that was the book that I read that taught me that there was such a thing called the Senshise course. So without Angry White Pajamas and, and Robert Twigger, um, writing it, I, I maybe would never have known there was a Senshise course and I never would have taken the opportunity to go to Japan and enroll on it. So I'm very grateful to him for writing that book. Um, I think the, the, the two principal differences are that when I went to Japan, I trained in the martial arts for a long, long time. So I trained in Muay Thai, Kung Fu, one or two other things, some MMA, some Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So I would, I would describe myself as a seasoned martial artist. And I went with the primary intention of, of experiencing training Aikido in Japan. So what I try and communicate through the book is the perspective of a martial artist who is in Japan training in a specific martial arts. And my understanding through martial arts, a martial artist's eyes as to what I'm seeing and what I'm experiencing. I've never met Robert Twigger. I've read his book. His book's great. But what didn't necessarily come through come through his book as far as I was concerned reading it uh, for me as a martial artist was was that deep level of analysis and understanding of of the martial arts mentality um, his book is very entertaining my book I think is pretty entertaining in places people have told me they've laughed out, out loud so maybe it is maybe it isn't so I think on on that perspective we both did a similar course but in different years but we both saw the course through debt through very different eyes and maybe had very different motivations for doing it. The other elements of the, of, of, of my book compared to angry white pajamas is I wanted to dive really, really deep in terms of the, the individual steps of the course. So what it, what that 11 months was specifically about. And I wrote the book from my source document, which was my diary. And what I didn't want to do is, is to write it, is to print the diary because it would be very repetitive because the course in many respects is very repetitive. But I wanted to stick to the chronological order. So you have the Daiichi, the Daini, Daisan, Dai on the four stages of the course and to dive really into the detail of each and every day so that the reader experiences the course each and every day without necessarily realizing that they are experiencing the course each and every day because it's not so obvious to say this date, this date, this date, this date. So I wanted to write it in a very entertaining way. So Angry White Pajamas for me, it highlighted a number of very specific classes with some very funny stories and some, and, and some great narrative there. But what it didn't do for me, it didn't tell me, okay, in April you, you, you did this and then you moved into May and you did this. And I wanted people who'd never done the Senshise course to really feel what it was like to do the course and to communicate that in a very entertaining way. The, the, the final element, so there's probably three things. The final element, I do a lot of soul searching, self-reflection towards the end of the book. So I wrote the book 13 years after the course. And I wanted to write the book, not just for martial artists, but I wanted to write 
this book for anybody going through a struggle who is, you know, whether somebody is in a struggle or will be in a struggle because the story, yes, it is set in a martial arts dojo, but the story of the Senshise Year yeah, and the story of Suck It Up or Go Home is really all about how to stay resilient, how to how to how to get through struggle struggle and how to get through difficult times. And we're all in very, very difficult times at the moment. So quite a few differences, albeit it's about Japan, it's about the Senshise Year course, but mine is got a few other elements to it, I think. Wow, good question. Well, I, I totally agree with you that the world, if we look at the if we look at the world now compared to when we were in Japan 14, 15 years ago now, the world has, has, has moved on at a rapid pace. Everyone's got social media, everybody's got um, smartphones. We are more connected or have the opportunity to be more connected than ever before. But I think as a society and a world, we're probably more disconnected than ever, which is, which is very sad. So we have the tools, but those tools in a way have allowed us to, to miss this human interaction and miss this deep connection that human beings, we, we need to survive and we need to, to, to flourish. You know, I think I enjoy reading. I think when I was coming up when I was, you know, the age of my children are now, you know, they're seven and eight. You know, they, they want their iPads now. They don't really read books. And, and there, is, there is something very special, I think, about picking up a paper copy of a book, starting at the beginning and getting, getting to the end. You go on a journey to somewhere you've never been before. And the difference between reading a book and maybe watching a film is you are the director of that of that story so you you create the images in your head that that, that fit the narrative of the book so it, it teaches you to be very creative uh in your mind it teaches you to to think for yourself um and whatever you want to know in the, whatever you want to know whatever subject or whatever experience you want to have there's probably been a book written about it so i think books are very very important um i think i think the digital era we're in it has a place but I think it's a dangerous road to go down where we park, you know, the book stuff and, and we, we simply rely on digital devices because what, what digital devices and, 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 and what the social media sphere and all of this now, I think is really all about. It's entertainment. So we, 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 we crave entertainment. We crave attention. But thinking, thinking about the act of reading a book, that's something very, very different. You create the entertainment in your brain having read the words. And reading a book is something you do very privately on your own. So I think there's, there's, there's huge value. And, and, you know, as an advocate for, for, for books and writing books, I think we need to keep books firmly on our shelves and read. I mean, Angry White Pajamas, I mentioned that already. Great book. Um, that led me to Japan. So I'm very grateful for that, uh, for that book being written. Um, I read recently, I read uh, Uchideshi. Uh, by Jack Pyatt Sensei. Um, that's that's a very interesting read because it takes you twenty years, maybe more, prior uh, to the course that that I did in a different dojo with Kancho Gozo Shioda. Very very different environments. That was a very interesting read for me. Um, I've read most of the Aikido books. I've read um, Aikido Shugyo, um, quite a few of the others. Um, I guess. From, from a martial arts book books perspective, I would say there are less books probably out there that tell a story, a journey of, of, of somebody's unique experience in an environment like a martial arts dojo, the other side of the world. There are a lot of instructional books out there. I've read a lot of those over the years and, and certainly coming up, anything, anything talking about Bruce Lee and, and all of that stuff, Bruce Lee instructional books. I've read most of those. Um, but in terms of martial arts stories, I'm struggling to I'm struggling to think of that many that have influenced me. I guess Move, Moving Zen, which gets a mention in my book by C.W. Nichol, is another powerful book about a guy who goes to Japan to, to study karate. And I liked that book in particular because it had a, a had a deep spiritual side. Well, certainly I took took that away. And that, that goes back to my earlier point. You can take away from from a book 
whatever you choose to take away. It depends how you read it and how you interpret it. And that's the beauty of reading a book over, over being force fed um, something on a, a digital screen. So I'd say that that book was, was, was a big influence. So I think the book, I think the book, if, if and, and people need to judge it for themselves, but my intention with the book was to communicate on, on, on a number of different levels with people so that people could take what they wanted from the book. If you think about what the, what the main element of the book is about, it's about going to a strange country that I had no experience of and immersing myself in a strange culture that I didn't necessarily understand. If you think about what we are facing now in the world, we are immersed in a new type of environment that none of us really understand and none of us can really see an end to. So there, there are interesting parallels there. Um, the, the course, the Century Say course lasting for 11 months was about turning up each and every day and playing the game, training with the belief that you would get to the end. And I, you knew when the end was coming, but each day was, was particularly, particularly tough. You couldn't, you couldn't focus solely on you, you. You had to kind of focus solely on an individual day to get to the end, because if you thought about the whole journey that you were going through, the enormity of the task was too much. So it was a step out of my comfort zone. It was a step into the unknown. It was physically hard. It was mentally challenging. One of the challenges people I think are having currently is that they're doing the same thing every day. And that same thing every day is for many people being locked in their in their homes, um, you know, alone or, or, or with family in, in in environments that they're not used to operating in that much. The Century Say course was about going to the same place every day, doing the same things every day. And that was the challenge in writing it to not repeat, but to, to highlight the stories in a chronological order. So there are some parallels there. Um, what I tried to do at the end of the book is to be very self-reflective as to what the course taught me about my ability to withstand hardship, because the course was a lesson in hardship. And I think there are two ways you can view hardship. You can view it as, as, as something very bad um, and something that you're going to battle against and you can't battle against it. Um, or you can view it in the fact that it's going to teach you something about yourself and your ability to withstand it that is going to make you stronger and better able to handle things further down the track uh, and sometimes when we're in difficult situations it's hard to see what that situation might give us on a positive side and it's very hard to see that at the moment but we are a resilient people we are a resilient um, people are resilient and if you take each day as it comes you stay motivated um, you stay on track and, and you believe you'll get to the end, then you will. So maybe, maybe not the, the clearest of answers, but it's quite a deep, a deep question. You have to okay. read the book really to find out. Yeah. So, so, so you're absolutely right. The, the, the course that I was on in my experience, I kind of fell in love with Aikido. I fell out of love with Aikido. I fell in love with Aikido again. And what I wanted to portray in the book was the honest, authentic, warts and all feeling that I had when I was there on the course, un, un, unfiltered. So everything that you read was exactly how I felt. And I said at the start of the book, you know, some of the things I'm going to say, people may not want to read or, or may disagree with me, but that's how I felt at that, at that time. So if, I, if I'd have written the book right at the end of the course it would have been a very different different book and it would probably have been quite negative about the whole experience but writing the book 13 years later and being more mature and having reflected on my time in japan and what i got from my time in japan as you rightly say the circle kind of came good and i realized um that that for me anyway aikido was less about the, the 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 physical movements but aikido was more about this understanding of meeting force with force or choosing not to meet force with force um, avoiding confrontation um, and trying to trying to blend if you like 
with with life people call aikido the you know the art of harmony the way of harmony uh, and i think people get very confused with that because aikido can be a very brutal style of martial arts especially yoshinkan aikido so when we talk about harmony people get confused but but the the principle of aikido is to is one of the principles of aikido is not to meet force with force which is a very good thing to carry with you in life because if i use um you know, if I use a, 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 an example, um, if you get in a boxing ring and, and you, you're sparring, and I've done this many, many times with my Thai boxing, and you spar and you go, you go a bit hard, the other guy goes a bit harder, then you go a bit hard, then, then he goes a bit hard, and suddenly you get a proper confrontation, which is no good for either of you because you're going to get injured. Both of you are going to come off worse. And Aikido teaches you to think differently about that kind of thing and, and to diffuse situations and, and as I put in the back of the book what was very interesting for me is to how to finish the book I quoted Kancho Gozo Shioda the founder of Yoshinkan Aikido in the last word um, and what he said about Aikido and his mission for Aikido is more relevant today than, than, than ever before in my opinion so as, as you know one of the seven in one of the assistant instructors on the course you know, he, 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 he brutalized us quite a lot. And I didn't really understand why at the time. And I fought against that at the time. And he, he, he said to me, one day you'll understand, one day you'll understand. And I wasn't sure one day I would understand. But I think I do understand now. And, and that hardship taught me a lesson about life. And it taught me a lesson about how I interact with life and how to interact better. And as you'll have read at the back of the book, Carlos, I interviewed all of the all of the senshi say all of the people that tr that did the course with me, and def certainly Ronan and Lloyd, who also did the course, I think they understood the same thing as me by the end because they would they would maybe have confrontation in their lives, and and having done the course now, they seek to use confrontation as the very very last resort, which is exactly you know, what I try and do nowadays. So traditional martial arts, I think will teach people something very, very different to sports martial arts. And I think, I think Aikido is, is very multifaceted in that you can do Aikido to learn to defend yourself, or you can do Aikido to learn how to better your mind and the better your thinking. Aikido gives people an opportunity to have that physical interaction um, but also to, to develop themselves mentally. It's, it's a very, very complex martial art. And I think people come to Aikido and can get what they want from Aikido. So I'm, I'm, a, big, I'm a big advocate for, for Aikido. Aikido does get some bad press and it, and, and it continues to get some bad press because of the, the moves. Is it, is it staged? Is it not? Um, but Aikido has got something very special about it, most definitely. Well, the, the, the book is available on Amazon worldwide. Uh, it's available in Kindle format and paperback format. I'm working on the hardback format, which will be out a little bit later on this year. I'm also working on the audio book, um, which is, wow, that's a big, big project. And that will be available, hopefully, by the end of this year as well. Um, you know, why should people read the book? If you have an interest in Japan, you have an interest in, in, in Tokyo, if you have an interest in a different cultural experience, you'll get something from the book, I think. If you're a martial artist, whatever martial art you practice, I think you will see stories within the book that you can relate to. Um, if you are on a, a journey in life, if you face some bumps in the road, you know, my story starts uh, having been bullied at school, a very, very negative experience. But that negative experience, which is kind of what I alluded to earlier on in our discussion, a negative experience can be seen as a purely negative experience or it can be seen as guiding you to something different and a different path for, for, for the greater good, for to, to better yourself. And, and that experience of being bullied is what started me on my journey of martial arts. And martial arts has given me so much um, and I try and communicate my love for martial arts, not just the physical movements, but, but what it gives you mentally um, throughout the book. Um, as you'll know from, from, from the latter part of the book, I do go very, very deep. I feel a little bit like that I kind of, sometimes as people, we can be very closed, can't we? And we don't reveal our true selves and our true feelings and our true 
vulnerabilities. And what I wanted to do at the end of the book is to reveal how I felt, how I felt after the course, my vulnerabilities, the, the mental challenges that I had. And, and for, for two or three years after the course, I was lost in a, in a, in a wilderness. I probably, you know, I probably had, I don't know, some kind of mental breakdown as a result of doing something so regimented and disciplined and then coming back into, into normal society. And I, I went through that journey and I talk about that journey and I got to the end of that journey and now I'm in a, in a, in a good place. So if I've done my job correctly with the book, anyone reading the book will, will hopefully take something from it that would speak to them and help them in a challenge, help them understand something about Japan, uh, be a nice story for them to read about martial arts, to be an entertaining read. As I say, a few people have told me they've laughed out loud. There are some funny stories in there. Um, so that's it, really. I would love to hear from anybody watching this what they think. Uh, there's an opportunity to review the book on Amazon. Um, I think with any book, if you if you write a book, you are gonna you are gonna polarize to a certain extent. So some people are gonna love it, and some people are gonna hate it. Um, if you write a book that people think is okay, well, that's that's okay. But I would rather you loved it or hated it because that that's emotion and, and as human beings, that's what we, we thrive on.